Hey, welcome back to Bourbon Blind, where the guys drink without the hype of the label. So tonight's bottle comes from Anthony Foria, and I was super shocked that we haven't done this. So not to give like a total plug, but Jack Daniels is 15 minutes from us, and they were so sweet and provided all of the barrel staves behind us. So um, thanks to uh, Jack Daniels for that. With that, tonight's bottle is Jack Daniels Old Number 7. It is a Tennessee sipping whiskey, and um, I've actually had fights about this. Uh, it is um, known because, not because it's really not bourbon, but uh, Jack says it's Tennessee wh sipping whiskey. So we're going to stick with the Tennessee whiskey and um, not call it bourbon tonight, but uh, super excited. Um, I'm really curious to hear what the guys think of this. This is just the standard. Um, if you're new to our show, we drink bourbon, or they drink bourbon, that they don't know what they're drinking. And then they're going to give you a price point that they're willing to pay to get that bourbon on their glass without knowing what it is. I'm going to go get the guys, and we're going to see what they think of uh, Jack's number seven. You want tacos tomorrow? I fucking do. <laughs> tacos every day. Breakfast and lunch. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Bourbon Blind. I'm Kyle. I am Nick. You are Nick. Congratulations. I remembered my name. <laughs> uh, Y'all know what's up. We give you a price tag. You'll be willing to pay for a bottle without the hype of the label because hype sucks. You may notice that the bar is a bit different. That's it because is. Because it's uh, out being uh, planed. Yeah, it is currently uh, two two by tens. and uh, Which, because lumber is... Not two by ten. Not science. It's not two inches by ten inches. It's um, another channel, I'm sure. So yeah, the, I should have that back by Friday. So hopefully next time you you gonna see that it'll it'll be on. And I plan on uh, getting the stain, getting the stain on there, and everything. So it'll yeah. actually be like done and attach it. So counters yeah. should be here soon. Counters should be here soon. Got that ordered and paid for. That's it was about as twice as expensive as it should have been. You know, COVID. Right. So, anyway, uh, this yeah. is straight up sweetness. Yeah. Like. A little, little bit of ethanol, but. Bubble gum. Fruit pops. Okay. Gummy bears. <laughs> <laughs> Mike and Ike's. No Snickers. Swedish fish. <laughs> no chocolate. It's, it's just all the, the sugary stuff. Not that I, Snickers I can, is sugary, but... See that? I almost get like a nerds. <laughs> I'm not kidding about that. Like like that kind of sweetness. We're just, it really is. It's that candy... Yeah, it's like a candy, candy sweetness. Candy sweetness. I mean, I like candy. Just, you know, just look at me. So, anyway, let's... I, I, would, I would like to keep giving notes, but I just... I'm almost getting... There's almost like a faint oakiness in the back. I was going to say a faint fruitiness. Oaky fruit. Fruity oak. Sure. All right, I think that's about it. I mean, no. legs are running pretty quick. Not not complicated, but pleasing. Yeah. Anyway, cheers. Hey. Hey, girl. Hashtag that ring in the comments. That's a lot like the nose. Very sweet. I'd say somewhere between 80 and 90 proof. I can't tell if it's finished. It very well could be with all that sweetness. It also very well might not be. It's a fine line. Going back to the nose after tasting it, just more, more of that candy sweetness. I've got some in my mustache. Felt Do the old smell your skin trick. Yeah, smell the back of your hand. It basically is a reset for your brain because that's no smell. Almost no ethanol. Like, I mean, just, the, almost just no, the faintest. Almost no nothing, though. Like, I got a little bit of ethanol, but I realized I was, like, nose deep in that glass. I was going to say. <laughs> it was balls deep. There'll be a glass breaking noise there. Right. I don't know if YouTube would block out balls deep. Balls isn't a bad word. I, I don't know. But I do feel we'll like we'll find should, out though. <laughs> I feel like you should do a glass breaking noise every time you say balls, though. I'm saying no more than 90 proof. Probably definitely closer to 80. 
sweetness. Yeah, eighty eighty five, probably at the most. I'm I'm not getting any sort of young. Anything. No, no, it's I would and say like, it's comfortably over four years. It's super light color. Yeah, it's it's like a like a hay. Like hay. we walked in and I saw the glasses and I was like, that almost looked like something watered down. I like mean, it crossed my mind. I was like, did Aaron water something down to fuck with us? Like <laughs> Technically, if it's uh, if it's not barrel proof, technically it's all watered down. Technically, it is. But add a little bit more water. Oh. You made me sploosh on the table. There's just, nothing there now. That just smells like a like a watery marker to me. You and your markers, man. Look, I'm telling you. Okay, like it doesn't actually, actually it, smell like a marker, but it kind of does remind me of those. Thank for the first time, though, first time. Thank you. First time. But not like a scented marker. Just like a not like a sharpie. No, like like a scented like a scented dry erase marker. And not not a sharpie, talking. like a no. dollar, like a dollar store marker. I get like more dry erase. I don't know. Sweetness. More sweetness. Almost like the, the was, tiniest bit of drying on the finish, which exits stage left immediately. Um yeah, it, it's coming. It comes and goes. Come, come, comes and goes. C- comes, yeah. It does all that thing. I feel like we should censor what you just said. I'm not a hundred percent sure <laughs> if that's allowed. Speaking on YouTube. of YouTube algorithm, <laughs> now that I smelled the sharpie on the first one, I can't or the the marker. I can't not smell it on this one. Sweetness, bubble gum, gummy bears, nerds. It's just sweetness. Almost like those little peach ring things, like. <laughs> but not like, not like the actual peach flavor you get from those, but just the sweetness. Yeah, there's no like fruit peach, flavor no. in that. It's just sweetness. It's let's, not upsetting. Let's see what this is. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not mad it's just, at it. It's very one dimensional, but it doesn't present like it's anything but one dimensional. If someone didn't like whiskey. This will be a good a good drink for them. Yeah, I won't. I don't want to say like an intro to bourbon or whiskey no, though, because it's not, not. This is not representative of the rest of the realm, right? If you give this to a person for the first time, they'd be like, "Oh, everything's like candy." You're like, "I'm except yes, but also all resounding no, <laughs> <laughs> resounding no." All right. All right. <laughs> Jack so, Daniels number seven. All that sweetness that I didn't say bananas a single time. And you've said nothing except bananas every time you talked about Jack. You know what we didn't do? Hmm? Give it a price tag. (laughs) And that's not because we hated it. I said what I said. I didn't hate it. It, I didn't hate it either. But like now that I know what it is, I don't know if you'll take it seriously. But I'm like seriously like 10, 15 bucks. I was going to say 20, 25. Like. There's literally nothing wrong with it. It's just real sweet. It's just that there's nothing. It's not there's anything wrong with it. It's that there's not anything. I can't believe we didn't get any bananas. I can't believe you didn't get any bananas. I almost never get bananas. I do sometimes off of it, but like that's your immediate go-to is Mm -hmm. bananas. Breaking news, Kyle doesn't like bananas. I love bananas. Maybe a tiny bit, but I feel like that's my brain influencing me. Now that you know what it is. Yeah. So, uh... I'm not bad at it. Yeah. Tennessee Sour Mash Whiskey. Could be argued that it is, in fact, a bourbon. <sighs> legally speaking, it is a bourbon. Yeah. Legally speaking. Feel free to hash it out in the comments. It's a bourbon. Um, I have personally emailed the TTB. They're the ones that take care of all the labeling requirements and everything for whiskey, bourbon, gin, vodka, everything alcohol related. And uh, asked them about the Lincoln County process, which is the charcoal mellowing. And does that exclude a whiskey from being able to be labeled a bourbon, providing all other requirements are met? They said, no, that does not dislabel it or does not dis whatever. Disqualify. Disqualify. Thank you. I'm here to help. Um, Also, the Master Distiller has been on Bourbon Pursuit podcast. And he said, was Jeff Arnett at the time? And he said, yes, they could label it a bourbon should they so choose. Jack himself. Uh, who was also, by the way, Jack Daniels was not a tall. He was like he was like Aaron's height. I think he was five foot 
two? Five foot two, five, five foot three. Five nothing? Like, something like that. He's He was comfortably below five and a half. Yeah, yeah. He was, he was literally like Aaron's height. And Jack Daniels has made about 15 minutes up the road from here. Mm-hmm. It's... Yeah. I think we've both been there at least... At least a dozen times. Yeah. At least. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, the charcoal mellowing process, according to them, is a an extractive process, not an additive process. According to the TTB, According yes. to the TTB, who are the ones that decide what can and can't be labeled, whatever it is. Right. Um, so it extracts things, doesn't add things, therefore it's not considered an additive, which, which would disqualify it from being called a right. bourbon. And in all fairness... Almost all whiskey you get, uh, especially American whiskey, whether it's bourbon, whiskey, whatever, is charcoal filtered. So, which that it is, is charcoal it is whiskey. filtered. It is whiskey going through charcoal, no matter how you look at it. So, so yeah, the Lincoln County process, uh, which we live in Lincoln County, Tennessee, mm-hmm. i.e., the Lincoln County process. It's where it was. We, it was we, where was it? <laughs> we live here. And it Jack goes Daniels through. is in Moore County, not Lincoln County. It is. Um, interesting fact. But they um, also is made in a dry county. I feel like most people know that by this point, but maybe it's just because, again, we live here. Just like Jack Daniels' like, claim to fame. Like, they want it that way. It, the, the entire county population is like 783 people, I think. Right. Like, Which is. It's not many no. at all. Uh, fun fact: In Tennessee, they don't have enough people to vote to make, to make it, it not a dry county. And Jack Daniels wants it that way. They do. They they like it that way because it's good marketing thing for well, them. It's 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 one of the the big like calls to Jack Daniels is that we're in a dry county. We're one of the largest, or if not the largest, and well known whiskey brands on the planet. Uh, they're actually one of the most well-known brands, period, mm-hmm. on the planet. Right. They're one of the most recognizable brands in the world. Not just for alcohol, but just overall. Period, yeah. And um, so, like, that, you can go to their distillery and, and do tasting tours and regular tours and all this stuff, and they have a, a, a guest sign-in book, and you see signatures from people from Almost every country, Japan, Germany, you know, East, Eastern Europe. Oh, yeah. Western All Europe, over the world. You know, Asia, India, Af- African countries, mm-hmm. South America, like all over the place. Like that's it's almost like a pilgrimage to go to Jack Daniels for, for a lot of people. It's just it really it's in the middle of nowhere. We live in the middle of nowhere and they're farther out in the middle of nowhere. Right. They're, they're 30 minutes from anything mm-hmm. of any use. I believe their mash bill, uh, you could correct me on this, I believe it's 84% corn, 8% rye, 8% barley. That sounds right. Okay, I remember 8 and 8, so doing the math backwards, it had to be 84, right. 8 and 8. Yeah, you know, which is a really super low rye mash bill. Um, and that cor- all that corn could be easily where from the, a lot of the sweetness is coming from. They do charcoal mellow through a maple charcoal. Uh, they do make all their own charcoal in house, which I gotta see for the first time. It's super cool. It it's really a really is. cool process. Like, they have these huge like fume hoods, and they stack up all these. Uh, they're not pallets, but they stack up. They have these it almost huge looks like racks. handmade pallets that's not right. nailed together. Right. They have these huge racks ricks. of ricks. huge ricks of of maple wood wood things it's like two by two wood. Right, and they like they're hand stacked and. They move them in and light them on fire, and they they have some people that like their entire job is to it's it's make two sure. guys yeah. and their entire job is to make sure that that charcoal is made perfectly, right. basically. Because if you uh, let it burn too low, too hot, it goes to ash. If you don't let it burn hot enough, it doesn't turn into charcoal. And as lighter ignition fluid, they use white dog uh, right off the still at 140, 150 proof, whatever right. it is, and it is eighty proof. That is 80 proof, which I, yeah, that makes total sense. Um, but yeah. I feel like we could go on about Jack Daniels for a while. I, I really have nothing like, negative to say about Jack Daniels. Their tour, mm-hmm. for my per, for my preference, is a, is a little commercialized. It is, but um, also... But it's, still, it's still a very neat location. If you'd only it's been through it place. one time, then you'd probably be, oh, that's really cool. Right. And being through it just so many times with us. Over the here, years. Because right. when people come into town, we're like, oh, let's go tour Jack or whatever. Because right. 
It used, used to be small, free, and now it's not. Right, but also, like, we live in a small town, so there's not a whole lot else to do. Right. Like, it's, it's, you want to go to Jack, you want to go to Walmart. Like, right, that's... You want to go people we watch got a, or... We got a Walmart. Or check out whiskey. <laughs> like, uh, we got a Zaxby's recently. That was great. Ooh, yeah. Um, um, but no, Jack, Jack Daniels, no matter how you feel about the liquid in this glass, they put out a quality product. Yeah. It's consistent. This bottle will taste like the next bottle you buy three months from now, and the next mm-hmm. bottle you buy, and the next bottle you buy, and so on and so forth. Um, and I will say... Their single barrel barrel proofs is... That's where I was going to go. Is I knew. I knew. Oh. Let me have a thing. Those are... You, yeah. ha- you have... You have problems currently. Apparently. Um, <laughs> he has called some of the Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proofs that he's had stag killers. Yeah. Like, for real, real stag killers. Um, some of them are just out of this world. Um, they have uh, their Gentleman Jack, which is twice charcoal mellowed. I think once before and once after, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, after barreling, once before barreling, once after barreling. So this is the single barrel barrel proof. This is a mm-hmm. store pick from Elixir. Shout out to Tarak over at Elixir. Always doing amazing great, story. great things. It's 131 proof. Mm-hmm. So, and this is called "Let's Get Dangerous." Let's. Get I am the one hundred and thirty-one proof banana pudding that flaps in the night. <laughs> um, um, but no, they're single barrels. I've had some of their single barrels that are just fantastic. Their barrel proof is absolutely killer. No even just task. their regular single barrels, because those are a, a bottle that a higher proof than eighty. I want to say they're like 90. 90 ish. Something like that. 86, maybe. 86 to 94, something like that. But I mean, they're legitimately really good. They're very smooth. They're very smooth. Some people have problems with smooth. No matter matter what you say, like Jack Daniels puts out a quality product. They really do. They they have nailed down their consistency and their market. Other than this tasting a bag of like a bag of candy Mm -hmm. blind, we didn't say anything bad Mm -hmm. about it. Like no, but there was no burn. There was no harshness. It was there was Still, nothing wrong with it. Uh, they say they barrel four. Uh, they bottle it between four and seven years old. Yeah. So, which and is totally fine. All of the stave wood on the back came from Jack Daniel's barrels. It did. All those staves back there that you see, and those are real staves out of barrels, uh, just like I don't know if you can see down here. Um, those all came from Jack Daniel's barrels. Jack Daniels was kind enough to supply us with uh, as many staves as we could possibly use, and then some. Yeah, uh, yeah. they go through an insane number of barrels there. Um, and uh, I think Tabasco is a uh, mm-hmm. Tabasco is barreled in ex Jack Daniels barrels, mm-hmm. and we actually learned that at George Dickel because mm-hmm. George Dickel then buys those barrels for their Tabasco. You know what I think is one of the most awesome things that I totally did not expect. From Jack Daniels. What's that? Um, I went to a uh, Tennessee uh, whiskey fest. Yeah. And it wasn't just Tennessee brands. Like, it was... Everyone was welcome. It was just in Tennessee. Right. It was just in Tennessee. And obviously, there were a lot of ten local Tennessee distilleries there. Um, talking to a lot of the master distillers. So, they have a uh, Tennessee Distillers Association, I want to say. Uh, something to that effect. Yeah. And Jack Daniels is on there, along with all of the other craft distilleries, a lot of the other craft distilleries in the state. Jack Daniels has lobbied, like they've spent money and lobbied the state to change laws in favor of the smaller distilleries. That That's, that's is crazy. Like <laughs> There's props for that because... Jack Daniels, as big and powerful as they are, they could have easily lobbied the complete other way and said, screw you, local distilleries. We are. They could have lobbied the state to shut them down. Right. Like, and probably gotten it done because of how powerful. Or to they pass are. a law that would have hindered them. Right. And made existing. them shut down or right. been too expensive or whatever. Like, no, like they were totally in favor and still are in favor of helping the smaller local distilleries, which, I mean, You've got to is it props. a competition for Jack Daniels? I don't know because no, Jack is Jack. Of course not. Right. Everybody but, knows Jack Daniels. Right. But they didn't have to help them. Mm-mm. No, not one bit. So, I mean, that's fucking awesome. 
It really is. Like, I'm going to ballpark that Jeff Arnett's still the master distiller. You're not never going to be able to read that, but that definitely looks like Jeff Arnett. It is, and he re- uh, retired, uh, moved on, quit. Um, Whatever. It was fairly abruptly, like six months ago. Yeah. It was it was pretty recent. So, and I think they just named a new master distiller within the last month or two. I don't remember his name. Sorry. Speaking of local master distillers, Nicole Austin over at George Dickel. Yeah, doing some great stuff. Their eleven years, fantastic. Mm-hmm. Tennessee in general. Tennessee, obviously. I mean, it's not Kentucky, but we don't have there the is, quantity that Kentucky has. But there we have is some really good stuff. Massive amount of distillers. There's. What, probably four or five distilleries? I would even say five or six within 30 minutes of us. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's it's crazy. It really And then is. once you go out to an hour, there's probably twice that many. Oh yeah, easy. So anyway though, um Jack Daniels, keep keep doing your thing, man. You, you guys put out great products. So when you walk in there, it says every day we make it, we'll make it the best we can, which is something Jack Daniels always said. And it is You've been in there. No. Everywhere. <laughs> yeah. You'll see Everywhere it you if go. you go on the tour at least 10 times. That and statement plastered on walls that in like, you know, 280 point font. And right. And it's not just like where, like I'm sure to some extent it is a marketing thing. Right. But it's not just where the tour goes. It's other places in the distillery too, like employee only places. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been privy to some of that. and Fancy. Yeah. They, they really... They really believe that. They pride themselves in yeah. it. Last time I was there, which I said, I finally got to see them making the charcoal because mm-hmm. I've been there, like you said, at least a dozen times. And it's always almost always been on a weekend or something. And those two guys don't work on the weekends. They make the charcoal. Um, so I actually got to see it, which was really awesome. And those ricks are like eight feet tall. They're yeah, they're huge. Yeah, they're at least six feet. I know right. that. A lot of they, what they do there is a family business. Um, so one of the guys that works there, his son is now learning how to make the charcoal. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm sure they're probably going to bring him in to their, um, a lot of their job openings and stuff do go to family members or things in pure things, people in the area, <laughs> um, because they really do. They have that pride. I've heard that even for how big they are, like when you work there, you truly are family. And um, once a month, you get a bottle of Jack to take home. They do. On the first Friday of every month. They call it Good Friday. I'm pretty sure I, – I know I've heard this before from a few people that have worked there. They say when you get hired on, like, if you're working full time, you have a job for life. Oh, yeah. Like, unless you completely just screw something up, like, you will be able to retire from that job. Yeah. Or absolutely. wherever you move on to – you know, if you move up within the company or whatever, but – um, they really do treat everyone like family, and that's – like I said, for being such a big big distillery, a big company, they really do try to do yep. the right thing. And, and that's owned that's by awesome. Brown Foreman, which is an even larger company that mm-hmm. – you know, that, that that massive corporation mindset own, um, hasn't – Brown Foreman – or uh, Brown Foreman. They own – Old Forrester. Old Forrester, Cooper's Craft. Um, which is – both of those are fantastic. Mm-hmm. So, no, they, they really do an awesome job over there. So, cheers to you guys. Um, all of our Patreon members, absolutely love you guys. T-shirts at Teespring. This is all my shameless plug stuff. Uh, check us out Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Burble Blind Nation, all that good stuff. So, until Friday at noon central next week, cheers and drink blind. Drink it your way. We want to give a huge shout out to all of our Patreon people. Absolutely thank you. You guys are freaking magical. T-shirts at Teespring, link in the description. Also, thank you to anyone who has ever supported us, whether that's either coming on a live, chit-chatting with us on a Thursday night, or if you just like to watch our episodes, we appreciate every one of you. Until Friday, noon central next.